And I would also like to take this time uh, to thank our wonderful, wonderful event partners. We only work with brilliant people who we think can make a difference to people's carbon footprint. So many thanks to uh, Southern Disc and Energy, Green Tomato Cars, Location One and Camera Asset Store who help keep our events free to attend um, and accessible for all. So thank you for all of those. And now we're sort of settling into numbers and I do want you to be able to get started uh, and enjoy this fantastic session with our brilliant, brilliant panellists. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to the very wonderful Rosé. Hello, hello everybody. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening or good night, depending where you are. Uh, I'm really, really excited to be here. I'm just seeing very lots of familiar names uh, and it's really exciting to see where you are in the world, actually. I'm in Barcelona and it's definitely too hot. I already said it on the chat. Uh, welcome to Around the World in 80 Minutes. It is really great to have all our international community here together to discuss, understand and celebrate sustainable productions from different places in the world. My name is Rosé Canela and I'm currently the international manager at Albert. Again, I think I know many of you, um, whoever I don't know, welcome to the family and welcome to all this friendship community that we have. As many as you know, uh, Albert started 10 years ago in the UK. However, since 2017, we have been working with productions and stakeholders all over the world, with some of our first partners actually being here today on the Today session, both as panelists and in the audience. So again, this is especially for me personally, is a really, really special moment to have you all together here. Over the past five years, we have been delighted to welcome media stakeholders from outside the UK. Why? Because we know this is a global issue and so climate change is a global issue and it requires a global, a global approach. And Albert also acknowledges that this is with an, this with an international membership. So we recognize the unique challenges uh, faced by our international community. And as you won't put on the screen, you can see here our current members and partners uh, that you can see them that they are all over the world. So in January 2021, uh, we launched our new international toolkit, which it actually includes a, a database of 308 different electricity emission factors for different countries and states. And the tool was also translated into 10 languages. So whether you're working uh, in a single country or multiple countries, or you are in a co-production, which obviously like that's something that is being more common and common. Uh, so you can measure your impact wherever you are on the same production. And the toolkit also includes a carbon action plan to help productions reduce their environmental impact and to be awarded a sustainable production certification because also we all want to work hard, but we all want to be awarded no? and recognized of the things that we're doing and the things that we achieve. Uh, our toolkit is now being used in 80 different countries, 8-0, I'm saying, because I don't know English, so people might not understand me, uh, with the expectation for this to increase uh, in the next years. And at Albert, we understand that climate change uh, is a global issue, as I was mentioning. So for that, for us, it's really, really important that the global industry is connected, that we learn, that we collaborate from each other. And I have to say, in the last six years I've been at Albert, that's something that I'm really proud of our industry, really proud of seeing competitors sitting on the same table, discussing, collaborating, and trying to find a way forward. And I, I think we should be proud of our industry because I don't think all the industries, all the industries have got into, into, that, into that, uh, that place at the moment. So we are here to talk with some of our brilliant international members and partners, and they are going to help us understand their challenges, opportunities, and ambitions. So I'm going to stop talking because you all know that I love talking. Uh, I would like to introduce you to our speakers for today. And uh, actually, I'm just going to ask them to introduce themselves because they're probably going to do it much, much better uh, than I would do it. Uh, so should we start for JP? Good morning, everybody from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. My name is JP Pellemans, and I'm the uh, project leader of Albert and trainer in the Netherlands. And it is 10.37 now in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, in the thank morning. you. 
Thank you, because I said, please all mention what time is for you. It really excites me just thinking that we are on different times. Smile is not going to be that excited, but you'll, you'll find out. Uh, Goro, if you want to go, go next, please. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Gaurav. I head legal and business affairs for uh, Fremantle India. This is not my field, but uh, when we started this Albert partnership, I was the first one to approach my managing director and say that, you know, I would like to lead this for the country, for the company, uh, because we need to contribute. And it is vital that everyone is also contributing. So, yeah, here we are. Then it's been like a couple of good years of partnership with Albert and looking forward to uh, working more on this. I've just had my lunch. It's uh, five minutes past two. So <laughs> oh, <you're laughs> for my coffee. This is not time for you then. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Gara. And you're brilliant at what you do. I know, I know you are. Uh, and Smiley, please. Smiley, we want to know your time first. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, it is 1.38 a.m. here in Vancouver, Canada. You can see the darkness. <laughs> um, I got my cup of coffee, but I'm excited to be here. And I um, just echoing Rosé that, you know, I can speak about this at all times of the day. Um, so I'm the Real Green Sustainability Lead for Creative BC. Um, we're housed under the Provincial Film Commission um, in British Columbia. And um, I've been with Real Green since last year and proud to say that we're now a national uh, movement and we work with all of the industry stakeholders in the motion picture industry, um, which you'll learn more about uh, in my presentation, but um, also very glad to continue the partnership with Albert and uh, progress globally. Thank you so much, Smiley, and thank you, thank you so much for, for staying up uh, for us. And um, now we have Bassam, who I'm sorry I'm going to say it, but we really need to thank him because he's got COVID at the moment, so he's not feeling his best, but so thank you to be here, Bassam, as well. Thank you, Rosé. Um, I'm happy to be with you today. Um, my name is Bassam, co-founder of Greener Screen. Greener Screen is based between uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Amman, Jordan. I'm currently in Amman, Jordan. Um, now it's 11.39 uh, in the morning here. Um, I'm happy to be with you all. Thank you so much, Hassan. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to go. We asked we ask our, our panelists, thank you, all of you, for presenting yourself. So we asked them to prepare a short presentation in advance so that can help us, uh, that can help provide us with a little bit of context about what they're doing in their territories and what, and then we'll come together and we'll be able to ask questions. So please, if you have any questions, please stick them to, to the Q&A, to the Q&A section so we can go after the presentations. We're just gonna go in the same order that we did the presentations, if that's good for everybody. So JP, um, if you wanna share your screen and, and light us. Okay. Um, can you see my, my screen? I believe you can, huh? No, we can't yet. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I'm sorry. No worries. We're 122 people which okay. this is a massive success. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Now we can see it. Yes, Open, perfect. Open. Okay. Good morning again from the Netherlands. Um, I'd like to give you a, a brief insight about the Albert Club platform in our country, the Netherlands, where yesterday, unfortunately, we had the hottest 18th of May ever recorded. Um, to... To understand the Dutch Albert platform, you need to have a little knowledge of our quite peculiar uh, broadcasting system. Most broadcasters were founded roughly 100 years ago. In a time, everybody belonged to a certain political or religious, religious bubble, as we would say today. So VPRO was the Protestant broadcaster. KRO was the Catholic broadcaster. BNN Vara, the socialist broadcaster and Afro, the liberal broadcaster. Some of them merge, but basically our system still has traces of this history. EO, for instance, is the evangelical broadcaster, as WNL, BNL in Dutch, operates on the right side of the political spectrum. 
well, some are small, other are big, depending on the number of paying members they have. But who could have imagined that 10 of our broadcasters would find each other in mobilizing positive action for the planet? With member-free broadcaster NTA as a co 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 coordinator, they all work together on the Albert platform. Let me tell you something about our recent achievements. Last week, Hill Holland Bakt, uh, the great Dutch bake-off, was won by Enzo, a vegan baker, speaking about planet placement. In 2021, our average CO2 emissions for one hour of TV pr production was down from 9.6 to 6.6 .6 ton. COVID, of course, played a role here, but I'm convinced that our Albert efforts also played an important role. Holland's most popular travel show, Drie op Reis, decided to incorporate a weekly item about traveling not further than 500 kilometers from the center of our country by train, bike, or electric car. And last but not least, six out of 10 out of our 10 Albert broadcasters made the Albert package, as we call it, mandatory for their, for their employees. So what exactly is our Albert package? The package stands for six hours of support from our Albert team for a specific title. We call it Made to Measure. Every Albert member gets Albert packages depending on their size. The smallest broadcaster gets four packages per year, the biggest 12. One of our Albert trainers takes the producer of the show during an online session by the hand and together they finish the first draft in the tool by entering the data in the tool. Shortly thereafter, we organize an online, as we call it, carbon action plan training, in which we discuss the result of the first draft with the program team, producers and editors. Our trainers tell them about the science behind climate change, the impact of the media industry, planet placement, and ways to minimize your carbon footprint. During a brainstorm, the program team writes a carbon action plan for the coming season of their show. The last part of the package is finishing the final draft. Again, our trainer supports the producer in this phase. Finally, I'd like to share some recent developments in the Netherlands. Two broadcasters, BNN Fara and NTR, incorporated Albert in their onboarding program. New employees get a presentation from one of our team members shortly after they were hired. The Albert calculator, as you know, it was designed for productions with moving images. We are researching how it would work for radio shows and podcasts. Did you know that sending 20 emails a day for a year equals the emissions of 1,000 kilometers in a gasoline car. Now, with the development of a digital detox tool, we want to give people an insight in the effects of their data usage on their footprint. Last week, we took the first baby steps by asking for some funding to develop this tool, of course, powered by Albert. This year, we want to start uh, with the certification process of our productions. And last, but certainly not least, as Fremantle, ITV Studios, Bunny J, uh, and RTL have also started working with Albert in the Netherlands, we are investigating how we could work together in the near future. And um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, you can find us at wearealbert.nl. Over to you, Rosé. Thank you so much, JP. This is amazing. I love the kind of placement examples that you put really, really, really interesting. Always trying to look at our footprint as a production or operations, but also try, like seeing which opportunities we can put uh, on screen, not opportunities that we have. Also, I love the digital detox too. I want to know more <laughs> about this. Cool, perfect. Thanks, JP. We're gonna move into Goro now. If you're ready, if you can, if you can share your screen, and so let's see what Fremantle Media uh, India is, sure. is doing. We can see your screen. Okay. 
Thank you, Rosa. Thank you. So, uh, firstly, great thanks to Albert for putting putting up this uh, uh, session and obviously giving us the opportunity to present as to what we are doing in our territory. Uh, we are in the business of production of content, which we have uh, succeeded very well. But now we think that it's our responsibility to come up with a business which is more responsible and sustainable. And eventually it boils down to every individual's contribution to come forward and make a difference, right? So we really appreciate the partnership with Albert and would like to capitalize this and Albert's expertise to bring about the changes in our business. So uh, without much ado, I'll take you through the steps or the initiatives that Fremantle India had taken prior to, uh, you know, Albert training and Albert sessions. We had started using personalized water bottles like this one that I'm having right now. Uh, water dispensers were there. We used to donate food that were left over after the end of every shoot day. Utilization of paper in a better way, which is double side printing and Obviously, reduction of paper was not uh, uh, of any importance at that time because we were still living in a very physical paper world. Uh, use of LED light had started in India, which was a good thing because regular halogen bulbs used to consume a lot of electricity. And in India, we still use uh, washable crockery because we have abundance of labor. So in a way, it is good that we could uh, utilize the manpower and reuse the crockery that was available rather than bringing in disposable uh, uh, crockery, which was then we do not know how to get uh, rid of it. So these are the some initiatives I'm just listing now that we used to, uh, we had it in practice since a long time. Then obviously, uh, uh, thanks to Albert partnership, there was a lot of awareness and education that was passed on to me and then to all obviously other team members. We were made aware of the smaller things that we could uh, implement and by which we could we could lead to a very, very uh, a big change. Uh, measurement tool being one of the most effective ones because uh, until then, until the, the evolution of the management, the measurement tool, we were completely living in dark. We were not aware of where we, we were heading, whether the steps that we are taking, are they making any difference or no? So that was a great uh, uh, initiative. Uh, we brought in the garbage segregation wet dry was I think uh, more or less like a hit or a miss but then introduction of another bin for recyclable items was an addition that we made. We then started implementing restriction on use of plastic bottles. Uh, that's just one part of use of plastic. There are multiple uses of plastic but it depends how we can reduce but that's a long-term process I would say it cannot happen overnight but putting an end to use of plastic water bottles was, was important. Though there are still instances that celebrities do demand uh, water in, in a bottle rather than uh, them being served in a, in a glass or a bottle like this, because uh, they think I'm drinking from a sealed water, water bottle that's uh, clean and hygienic. Uh, we also understood what's the use and importance of reusing and recycling. So there were many items and materials that were getting discarded at the end of production. It was all junked out initially. And then we understood that they could be reused in maybe in a different production or maybe uh, ensure uh, that they are recycled in a, in a, in a better way. And obviously uh, in the last two years, we've seen COVID affect our lives. So everything moved to digital. So earlier we were just using paper to print uh, uh, scripts and uh, run orders in uh, double sided, but now we've also got it down and made it made use of the digital tools that are available with us. Uh, India being India, uh, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, the most important uh, being the source of electricity. Though we are sitting in an office that is powered by certified green energy, but uh, when you are on ground shooting, it's a very different situation. A lot of studios don't have electricity, so we have to use uh, generators which are powered by uh, diesel. They're not even bio uh, diesel or uh, you know eco-friendly diesel that is available in the country, but still not utilized because the cost is very high. Like I mentioned earlier, there are multiple use of plastic, like 
plastic carry-on bags, maybe some props are being made with plastic. So we are still trying to eliminate that. Uh, broadcaster support is a big one because end of the day, any new change that we want to bring about, uh, broadcasters, by that I mean uh, financial support. Uh, we are working on a production being commissioned by a broadcaster. So we would expect that our initiatives are also supported by the broadcaster financially. Lack of that is really difficult for us to, uh, uh, to manage. Though we do contribute from our end whatever we can, but end of the day, it is a broadcaster driven industry. Uh, then the next point is lack of electrical vehicles. Though are available in India, Tata, which is the owner of Land Rover Jaguar, is, is making electrical vehicles uh, and, and it's like increasing month on month. It's not even like a year on year increase. It's a month on month, 100% increase, but it's still not uh, so prevalent in the, in the uh, market, which can be leased out. So it's still being used for uh, private use only. And also there's no financial incentive or tax incentives being given by the government which would really encourage even companies to come forward and look at alternates and, and, and look for a sustainable production environment. So that's, these are the challenges that we are working with. Even this in mind, we were able to achieve uh, uh, some sort of success, thanks to Albert. So uh, last year we did a show for uh, YouTube. This was our first Albert certified production. It, it was shot during the second wave of COVID, second wave of COVID in India. And uh, even then with all the challenges and, and uh, uh, restrictions in place, we were able to get uh, our first certificate from Albert. I've just put a screenshot here, which gives you an idea of how the show looked on, on screen. It was a complete virtual production. Very limited people uh, uh, required to be present at the production hub, which we had created in a property, which was uh, uh, conscious about sustainability. So they had waste segregation, they had green energy available. Uh, though we could not eliminate use of plastic bottles there uh, because we were in the second wave, peak of second wave. So uh, the doctors could not agree with our suggestion. So, and Albert was kind enough to understand that, you know, on ground, there are certain challenges that we need to accept, though we ensured that those were recycled and sent back to the manufacturers and stuff. Uh, just to give you some idea of what we did for the show, if you see the image on the right side, that's the that's how the, the set or the setup of the host looked like. We had put LED lights uh, in his house. This is his house. He did not travel to the studio. And uh, uh, yeah, so this is how we produced. We, we took several initiatives like rechargeable batteries were in place. We use clothes from Zara, which was uh, manufactured in a sustainable manner. We use uh, makeup and cosmetic products that were produced in a sustainable manner. Again, cruelty free. Uh, they use packaging that was, uh, that reduced uh, packaging material to a large extent. Uh, there was, like I mentioned, LED lights and a whole lot of other things that we did to ensure that we were able to achieve some sort of success here. Uh, looking at the image uh, gives you a lot of thoughts, but uh, trust me, this is an age old uh, waste uh, disposal system that's prevalent in India. It's not something new. There, there are uh, scrap shops at every nook and corner of the block in India. Uh, especially uh, the, the cities, you could go give away your, uh, the, the stuff that's old and junk lying in your house. They will segregate everything at their end. And if you see the image at the bottom, you'll see a heap of plastic bottles. They then make sure that they go, the bottles then go back to the manufacturer and then uh, uh, it's reused or recycled in a, in a uh, proper way, which is what is also mentioned in the image on the right, if you see the bottles that are sold in India do come with a value that the vendors can get when they give it back to them. So all that we see, uh, this is really helping us to achieve our goals of sustainability. So our target for this year is that we want to achieve a production where no plastic is used. There's no paper. Paper also plays a very important role, we would say. 
the tissue papers that are there in the washrooms and stuff. Though we may not be able to eliminate uh, paper towels that are available for removal of makeups and stuff, but we'll find alternates for that. Of course, they are available, uh, sustainable and uh, alternates available. Waste cannot be eliminated, but we'll ensure that the waste is decomposed in a proper manner or sent for a facility to a facility, which and not not give it to the local government body because uh, that is increasing the burden on the system. So we want to take care of the garbage waste at our end itself. And uh, lastly, no excuses because end of the day, we do not. Uh, it's not one man's job. Every individual has to contribute and no excuses can be uh, tolerated. Uh, thank you, everyone. Time is running out is what I want to tell everyone. Every small contribution for from every individual will make a sea of change. I just give you, uh, give you one personal example here. So where I live in the apartment building, I've been uh, uh, arguing and debating with the, with the building uh, management that we need to have solar panels on the roof because we have abundant electricity available, uh, right? Though unsuccessful till date, it's been two years. All that they are waiting is that the government is gonna come up with a subsidy where, uh, so if I divide the cost of uh, installation of solar panels by four years, which is the recovery period, and the life of solar panel is 20, 25 years. So if I divide the cost by four years, uh, the subsidy that they are expecting from the government is not gonna be equivalent to the cost of maybe four to six months of payment, but we have wasted two years in just debating. So end of the day, even if the government gives me a six month uh, uh, financial relief, I have lost one and a half years of payment. So it's just, everyone has, has to get the logic and understand the sense. Thank you so much, you. Karo. Super interesting. I have so many yeah. notes here. Like I I love that you came with the waste has value. And actually, for example, from where I am in Spain, when I was a kid, I remember waste used to have value. We used to go and sell our newspapers to, yeah. to a scrap shop as well. Like, why have we lost that? Also very interesting about the difference between you talking about the broadcaster not supporting you guys, and then we just hear JP saying our broadcasters are the ones funding the project. So, Again, understanding the differences where, where each country But we are seeing the change now. We are seeing the change now. It wasn't there yeah. last year. That's the challenge. And that's good. Again, someone needs to start. You guys, Fremantle Media India, started in India. It's already going into your personal life already. So I think that's what, why we're here, right? Cool. Thank you. We're going to go into questions a little bit later. Uh, and we're going to go with a smiley now. Hope you finished your coffee. You're energetic to present like you always are. I'm going to leave it with you. <laughs> yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> um, is that good? Can everyone see that? Awesome. Yes. Okay, so yeah, like I um, said in my intro, um, I'm the Real Green Sustainability Lead at Creative BC. Um, so Real Green is an industry-funded uh, initiative uh, housed at the Provincial Film Commission. These are our partners that fund the program and they sit on our advisory committee and we meet quarterly to um, work on uh, projects and where the budget is going and how we could support and collaborate with our collective goals. Um, so you could see here this, this advisory committee is made up of um, studios, both uh, broad, like broadcast studios as well as soundstage facilities. Um, there's labor organizations, vendors, um, and um, the list is continuing to grow as we uh, carry forward. We have production companies interested in being part of it. So um, this program is possible because of all these amazing leaders in our industry. Um, and I also mentioned that we are now national. So we're working um, across Canada. We have 30 partners. Um, I, I think I, 30 or 32 partners across Canada. Um, and so the, those listed here are the other provincial film commissions that are on the National Real Green Committee. Um, we also have um, more organizations uh, that are, again, part of the conversation. They're also cost sharing the tools with us that we license from Albert. 
um, and we meet quarterly to talk about how we could collaborate with the resources and tools that you know we have established and are continuing to build in BC um, and be able to provide that support all, all across the country, um, especially to those regions where they don't have necessarily the, the budget or um, capacity to lead this initiative on their own. Um, so we're really trying to increase that collaboration and communication um, across all sectors um, and also just bridge the gap between um, you know, all of our uh, competing organizations um, and companies as well. So we have our strategic plan. Um, we're focusing really heavily on, again, like I mentioned, the collaboration, delivery, and um, services by working directly with um, both the productions and crew on the ground, as well as you know um, those representing the labor organizations and studios. Um, so. In our current strategic plan, we have three main uh, focus areas. The first is industry transformation. So this is really uh, talking about normalizing and influencing um, behavior shift in the industry um, through education, through communication, um, and um, sharing you know, our progress. Um, the next one is the zero greenhouse gas emission. So really focusing on um, how we can bring clean tech and infrastructure forward. And we work with our municipal film offices. So these are um, our local like city offices um, and engaging them in the conversation in, in terms of creating incentives and infrastructure for productions, um, which I will, I will talk a little bit more about later on. Um, and then also increasing awareness um, and access to clean tech, which includes electric uh, power, tie-in grids, um, and just eliminate um, the, the need for fossil fuel emissions, um, emitting machines, so like generators and cars and fuel. And then lastly, a circular economy. Um, so really emphasizing the prior priority of reuse over consumption. And we just established a brand new committee um, under circular economy to engage those people um, in departments that are often working with set materials um, and being able to create resources and tools to, again, um, offer circular methods. Um, so Real Green, uh, if you ask what exactly we do, um, taking these three strategic goals, um, we have several committees that either we are um, chairing and that we lead or are part of in the industry. So you can see on this list here, um, those include a policy action committee, the national advisory, clean energy. We have our general meetings that are open to the public. So. Um, it's more focused on BC updates, but we are seeing people from around the world attend these general meetings. Um, the Circular Economy, uh, Real Green Ambassadors, um, we're part of you know, the, the UN's initiative, ENZA, um, and then several of our labor organization green committees as well. Um, we have several toolkits that are available on our website to support productions and people in the industry to um, follow best practices. And we're continuing to grow this as well um, with time. We work closely with these productions by changing the language um, and uh, approach, service approach in the film commission. So any productions now registering through uh, us at the Film Commission when starting up their show um, is now, you know, will be completely aware of the Real Green Initiative and what's available and how we can support them. Um, I regularly meet with those on set, whether they're the PMs, producers, or sustainability coordinators to best advise um, and, you know, help you hold your hand throughout the process of these new changes. Um, and then again, that really open dialogue and communication with those partners um, to help facilitate these goals. 
Um, we work within the community, which I'll go more into in the next slide um, by just collaborating with um, different festivals and organizations and doing some like a panel like this. Um, we have courses available. So um, I will, I'll talk more about this, but we had the climate sustainable production training, which we adapted by, um, from Albert. Um, we carbon calculator training and um, we're launching a pilot placement training this year, which I'll talk more about. Um, and we've had over 1000 participants successfully have taken the, the climate sustainable production course. So we're hoping that number continues to increase as the months go on. Um, we also have a industry fundraiser where we raise funds each year. We just started last year um, during Earth Month, uh, giving my funds back to the regional parks. Um, this is where we're filming in and also where we go to like after work. Um, and then again, I mentioned that we are both provincial and national. Um, so community collaborations, these are some of the amazing people, organizations that um, in the last year have been able to work with, whether it's through collaborating on projects or panels or workshops. Um, and this list will continue to grow as we increase our participation falls under our industry transformation strategic goal. Um, some of the key impacts um, is so, you know, we did a little assessment of um, our presence and, and the uh, organizations and events that we take part in. Um, and we're seeing almost an even balance of both Canadian events and workshops and international. And it just goes to show that all the work we're doing is it's very much um, there's this global collaboration and we're not just focusing on Canada. Like I think that um, once we start working with our international partners um, and we're able to offer guidance and resources and tools, um, it only helps all of us continue to grow um, and, and work towards those target, target goals. Um, and number of people trained throughout the years, we could see in 2020, in 2021, there was this increase of participants um, due to COVID. Um, that's when the pandemic first hit and everybody was stuck at home. Um, so it was a great opportunity to like, you know, start educating yourself and taking these courses. So just kind of navigating um, how to continue increasing that now that we're, you know, working back on set. Um, and then we're also trying to track the use of the carbon calculator as well nationally. Um, and then Ryogen Partners uh, are continuing to grow over the years, both provincially and the National Committee only started last year in 2021 and already has increased in um, partners. Um, and then just how many um, committees that we lead versus uh, the industry leads and we're part of. Um, so something about uh, we're very proud to uh, talk about a lot is the, the clean energy resources map that is this is all on our website at realgreen.ca. Um, so this is something we established a couple of years ago, and it's a it's a tool for um, productions to look to when trying to find um, grid power so that you could find clean um, power options. Um, we established this in our region around Metro Vancouver. It's continuing to grow and expand um, throughout the regions in British Columbia. And um, from here, you can see that there's 394 clean power sources tracked. And that allows productions to um, pinpoint exactly where um, they may be filming and then plan around that when they're booking their circus and crew park and um, catering locations um, so that you don't you can have, um, like skip the the diesel generators. But then we also have a second map called the generator parking locations map. And this is where you you have that opportunity to plug in where you are using your generators. This is you know, in, in vital information for us as well as the municipalities um, to see where generators are being used in what cities and what neighborhoods um, for opportunities to bring um, clean 
clean um, power resources, whether that's, um, you know, kiosks or tie-in grids or um, opportunities to plug in at locations offering power. So that's, a, you know, there's over 5,000 recorded um, generators, which is so important because if you if we see that there's um, a multiple in one area, um, it, it, it gives the, the city an opportunity to look at that and see if they can invest. Um, so that's something that uh, we established in 2020 and it's just growing. Um, Ontario recently launched their grid tie-in map. Um, so just wanted to highlight that, you know, Ontario now has this um, as well. Um, and then we're hoping that the other jurisdictions across Canada um, also introduce something similar to this as well as anyone, you know, around the world. Um, so the Real Earth Day Challenge, this is something we started in 2021, and I was actually working on a production at the time before joining Real Green, um, so I got to participate in this fundraiser. So in the first year, we managed to raise $164,000 um, and funded seven projects, and these were more restoration um, projects, um, giving back to the parks. Um, and then this year we raised a hundred, almost a hundred nine thousand dollars, and this is despite having less productions filming in town as well as um, many things going on in the world. Um, so we didn't uh, make uh, raise as much as the year before, but still over a hundred k. Um, and this year, what was uh, a great highlight was that 50% of the funding raised went towards Indigenous-led projects and Indigenous communities, um, whether it's supporting summer um, camp programs for youth or um, connecting Indigenous youth with their ancestral lands. Um, so that's something. And then the other half went towards restoration projects. And that's because BC has been seeing a huge surge of climate disasters just in the last year it's affecting not only like our mental health, it's affecting our locations, where we're filming, where we go to relax. So we're hoping this also is increasing awareness and education around um, just getting involved in the parks industry and, and bridging the, the film industry with this um, industry. Um, we also are increasing our communication. Um, so just this year, we have a new website, a new blog, we have uh, a new Instagram page, and we're hoping this way we're able to reach even more people um, that aren't necessarily able to attend meetings, that aren't in the office. So be, be able to share what our partners are doing and um, how people can get involved. Um, so the Climate and Sustainable Production course, we've really taken it um, and, ch and changed it up this year. Um, we offer it for free. Um, it's a three-hour course um, with two instructors. I'm one of the instructors. Um, we're seeing a global reach. Um, people from all around the world are taking it. And um, we have three main focus areas, which is climate science, a little preview of a planet placement, and then sustainable production. And we also introduced this new breakout activity called the Green Production Action Plan. So those that participate in this course can leave with this clear action plan of what they can do in their roles. Um, which I'm really excited to then talk about Planet Placement, um, which is the newest course that we're uh, launching, um, adapted from Albert's editorial workshop. Um, we're taking and making it more North American focused, but also more Canadian focused. Um, so this is something that, you know, there's a, a really, really high desire for is talking about climate storytelling and um, how can we take what we're trying to do, you know, in real life and portray that on screen. Um, but also going beyond that and, and touching base on um, our role, both in the writer's room, so behind the screen and then on screen and how we're portraying um, different groups. Um, so talking about how racial injustice, generational injustice, and gender injustice plays a role in both um, climate injustice and climate impact, but also as well as um, in film. So 
Um, we are currently uh, developing it, researching, and then we'll be reaching out to our partners to get their involvement and then hoping to launch by early July. So um, definitely stay tuned if this is something you're interested in and, and you know, check out our website for updates. Um, and then we also are now introducing this new initiative within our, our partners is uh, doing like strategic and intimate lunch, it, lunch and learns. Um, and just engaging um, guests, which are, you know, made up of an like, invite list, whether they're production managers or um, gaffers or, or, or whoever the, the aim is, and, and really having those intimate conversations with what we could do to support, what are the questions, um, and, uh, and really just open that dialogue again. Um, you know, to best support. Um, and then looking ahead, um, so launching this year um, is a pine placement training. We are also developing um, a really national certification so that productions can be eligible for this certification um, once it meet these like specific criteria. Um, we are also launching a new Real Green Ambassador Community, um, a Green Studios Committee. So these are the facilities that productions film in. Um, and then also looking at um, doing more partnerships and community collaborations with BIPOC-led organizations um, and diversifying our, you know, our narrative and our goals. Um, so I, I know that was a lot, <laughs> um, but thank you for, for sticking thank through. Thank you, Smiley. Thank you. It's a lot because you're doing a lot. You've been for a long time with us. Thank you so much. And lots of interesting things. I love what you mentioned about the events being 50% international, 50% Canadian. So it kind of shows the need of, again, of working together. Also, I've been with you since the beginning of your journey. And again, loving how you started at BC. Then you started having pockets. And then you realized that the best way to do it is just do it all together. And again, it shows, again, collaboration is exactly what we need to be more powerful. I'm going to go to Basam. Basam, please. Thank you so much yeah, for yeah. being here. Basam is in Thank Jordan. You. So, all yours. Let me open my slides. Can you see my slide now? Yes, we can. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect. Um, we're greener screen. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we're based between um, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Jordan. Uh, we're a little bit different from the others. We're a social enterprise for a lack of better registration. Uh, we work as a nonprofit. At the same time, we work as a consultancy. Uh, our aim is to spread environmental sustainability in the MENA region uh, by doing several things. But we believe that we have an, uh, to build first an international network similar to this, thanks to Albert, uh, to work together, to accelerate um, our work, to have something that uh, we don't, uh, um, each country or each region, uh, try to reinvent the wheel. Since 2017, we joined um, the International Consortium with Albert as we started in 2014, but um, as an initiative, as a, something we tried in um, um, productions that we did as a, as a company or as an individuals. Then uh, in 2017, we became a separate entity. We joined Albert um, and we start talking about um, um, the uh, sustainable production to the region. We started in the UAE and we spread around the region. Um, we believe that the screen industry is very influential. We have a, a very strong platform that we can utilize to help changing climate change and change the narrative around climate change and spread awareness on screen and simplify sustainable production methods behind the scenes and in production. Um, our goal is to accelerate this effort and have uh, a net zero industry by 2030 uh, by regulations, not only by commitment, by pledges working with fund commissions, working with uh, regulators to have things um, after we uh, spread awareness through the training. This is how we are working. We started our um, uh, work with education and awareness using and adapting the Albert training, creating our own working in um, doing panels, discussions, uh, round tables, everything that we can. Because of COVID, um, things got a little bit delayed and we changed some of our plans. We, we wanted to introduce our calculation system in the region in 2020, but COVID hit 
and everything rolled a little bit like we're uh, we feel that we're two years behind because of that. Um, so now we're working around everything else before even introducing the calculation. Uh, we've been working with film commissions in the uh, um, UAE, in Jordan, and in different regions. They don't have film commissions, but they have um, organizations such as Lebanon, Egypt, um, with different festivals, and um, Saudi Arabia. So we're working around the region, all the Arab-speaking countries, let's say, um, to tell them how we, they can create incentives, create fund to um, um, accelerate this um, environmental-friendly sustainable production uh, values. So um, in Egypt, in um, Al Guna Film Festival, they have something called Green uh, um, Star Award. They give the best um, environmental film an award with, with a financial uh, support. Um, in uh, Lebanon, uh, Beirut, DC have some sort of uh, um, system production support through their Good Pitch in Arabic program with uh, um, uh, Doc Society. And so the thing is, is rolling um, around the region. Uh, we're working with the governments. Uh, we're lucky that we're in, in, in working, started working in Jordan and the UAE because the infrastructure is there. Jordan is one of the um, uh, most, I think per capita, one of the top 10 countries that has electric and hybrid uh, cars. Uh, we have 20% um, uh, uh, clean energy in the grid in Jordan by solar and wind farms in the UAE. It's, I think now 20, but by 2030, it will be 50% by nuclear, um, solar, and wind, uh, similar to other countries in the region. So the infrastructure is there, but uh, we need to link it to the creative industry, to screen arts. Uh, so we're working with different stakeholders, partners to link all these efforts so we can create incentives, we can create regulations, we can create fines to make sure that we can reach the goal in 2030. Um, but at the same time, we're working with international partners to provide solutions. So we don't want to make incentives and fines, but um, productions cannot find build those solutions. So that's why we participate in such panels, workshops to bring the uh, international knowledge and global uh, experiences to the region. This is what we do currently. We do sustainable production and uh, operational transformation consultancy for productions, uh, broadcasters and uh, studios. We design sustainable production best practice strategies for films. Mainly, we work with independent films. Um, editorial support with our CliFi and ClyDoc Development Lab. We, we um, inspired and adapted plan placement from Albert, and we managed to create our own um, um, content development lab. So we work with filmmakers who has um, fiction um, films or documentary films and work with them how to highlight climate change um, editorially on their films. Um, uh, climate impact and campaign strategy we work on impact and, and campaigns to uh, go beyond the screen and go to local communities. Uh, we do our training, editorial and technical training, and we curate uh, film screenings and sustainable team events. Uh, where are we now in a nutshell? Uh, we created our industry pledge back in 2017 when we started. Many of those who signed the pledge uh, are still like ambassadors and help us to reach uh, to their countries to, it was in Dubai Film Festival. And we had a panel with Albert back then, and we talked about the same production and we gained a lot of um, supporters starting that point. Uh, then we participated in so many activities in the UAE online, in Sweden, in the Netherlands, in Canada, um, on ground in Dubai before COVID, uh, we had the panel, uh, Rosé was there, and we did some stuff in Jordan too. Uh, last year, uh, we created something called Delil.film. It's a green uh, solution uh, guidebook, uh, an online guidebook with Beirut DC. We helped with the green guide. We created best practices plan for everyone to have access to information, how they can go uh, um, uh, um, and become more sustainable. Even if they couldn't attend any workshop, they can have at least general knowledge about it. It's um, in Arabic and in English, and it's available on the new film if you go to the green, um, uh, um, uh, green guide. Uh, we worked with a film called Costa Brava that uh, participated in Venice Film Festival and won the green um, star in El Guna Film Festival in Egypt. Uh, we helped them, and they were working in Lebanon. So it, it, it is a benchmark for the region because the film was shot after two months of 
the uh, Beirut uh, port blast. So it was devastating that even they couldn't, uh, their offices were, were shattered by the blast. So, and they decided to go green and film with, with the best practice that they managed and they did a, an amazing job. You can find um, an article about that on Albert website. If you Google garbage comedy, Costa Brava, you will find it. <laughs> it will be on the top of that search. Um, uh, so so we, we, we use this uh, method when everyone, uh, we use this um, example when anyone say, ah, oh, it's hard to go green. We say like, if it's in Lebanon, we, they have no infrastructure, no electricity, and they manage to do it, anyone can do it. We are a wealthy industry. We can spend millions on producing films. We can spend a little bit more to do the um, basic infrastructure, and then you will find savings. So uh, if we manage to do it there, we can do it anywhere in the world. Um, uh, in 2020-21, we launched a training program. We managed to train around 120 crew members and film students in Jordan um, in, in the basic of system production. And, and we used uh, um, uh, or localized um, Albert training to give a, an idea about climate change and its impact on, on, the, um, um, on the industry. And we created our own Greener Script Lab. Uh, we worked with 12 films. One of them is already done. Uh, they managed to put a message in the film that was a core of their plot, and it's not an environmental message. So, and we're going to have screenings in Jordan for a few films in June. Thanks to all our partners who are supporting us through this journey. Uh, we hope we can accelerate the two years we lost because of COVID uh, by this year, and we can catch up. And, and I'm happy to be with those amazing examples from around the world. Uh, thank you, and back to you, Rosa. Thank you so, so much, Hassan, for this. Um, I mean, I think one of the things that Hassan can really teach us is understand, like, con like different countries, different cultures, different challenges, no? Because I actually will live through that, no? That in one country, you were like, this is really hard to push, and then you go to the country next to it, and then the doors are open. So it, it really, really shows, especially in the MENA regions that you always been working on, like how even the different culture, it, it does affect how we how we approach uh, climate change. I also love what you said, that if, if they can do it in Lebanon, come on guys, <laughs> we can do it anywhere. Completely, completely, that's, that's the sentence for me. Perfect. So thank you. Thank you, the four of you, for presenting the amazing, amazing work that, that you're doing. We have some questions on the QA. Um, but one of the things that I would like, obviously, on, on the presentations, we already seen how like there are cultural differences as well. It, they really, really affect like positively and negatively in terms of how we tackle climate change, especially with legislation, government, go government bodies, etc. I would like to touch because there are a few questions about planet placement, about editorial, and I don't know all of you talked about, about editorial, but I would like for all of you to try to answer or like how do you think cultural uh, norms, for example, affect the way how you can put your planet placement message out there. So, so how do you think like the culture in your country, it's going to help or it's going to stop the media putting planet placement like good solutions and, and editorial content on climate change out there. Uh, should we start for you, Basam? That I put you on the screen. Yeah, sure. Um, well, culturally, it's there is no um, obstacles, but the problem is it's not something popular for everyone. So people would use poverty or use if they want to use any social, uh, they can use refugees. They can, but it it is not something that would. Uh, become first thing they can think about is climate change because it's not something popular. It's not something you can find it on the first page. But in the recent years, I keep saying it thanks to Donald Trump. He managed to popularize and uh, work against his message um, around the world. So people started talking about climate change. We are seeing it in the news recently in the Middle East, but still it's not popular in the entertainment context. So that's why we're trying to work with filmmakers to give them, this is another choice. I remember back in days when we, uh, when I was in school that um, a teacher would say, oh, you don't have to be an engineer, you don't have to be an engineer or a doctor. You can be a 
a developer or you can be um, something else. So that's what kind of approach that we're using. You don't have to talk about only uh, this topic. You can use climate change. You can use, because we, we, we are facing climate change day by day in Jordan by lack, we have the second poorest country in water. So we, and at the same time, we have one of the biggest issues, flash floods. So, so it's two contradic contradicting messages. So people would say, oh, how we are poor country, but we have like people can die from and drown from floods. So it, 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 we can highlight those in entertainment and talk about it. So I think we don't have cultural uh, boundaries, but we have knowledge boundaries or, or how to use this in, in that context. Yeah, it's about education, and that's something that we find, I think, probably everywhere in the world. It's not that, that content makers don't want to talk about it. Probably they don't even understand sometimes the relationship, no? how like an easy way to, 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 to put that relationship together. Uh, Gaurav, would you, I'm really curious to know in India like how, how that could be approached uh, and if you think it would be welcomed you know, by broadcasters and public, of course. Yeah, I, I don't see uh, culture being a hindrance here but uh, just the lack of willingness of taking that initiative and making that one small change. I think that is what people lack. Maybe it's due to people have still not uh, been made aware of what the drastic effect is uh, on the climate change, on the, on the environment, on, on our lives. Uh, it, is, it is happening everywhere. We have, um, we have uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir where it is snowing all the time it's almost like nine nine months uh, the, the the state is covered in snow but now we see a lot of landslides happening and stuff so the effects are being seen but i think somebody just wants to turn the blind eye and and move on do you think that because they're not getting directly impacted i think that's yeah the... do you think that also maybe content makers are scared to, to create to, you know to, to create that content because maybe they're going to get pushed back from broadcasters and i'm not saying in india here i'm saying like smiley and, and jp i would like you to answer that question. if they see the commercial upside they'll do it but i think till the time they don't see it uh, still not going to be uh, that effective yeah well, thanks. Uh, Smiley, what, what, I mean, I know you're starting the plant placement training this year as well. So how, how do you think that's going to land for content makers? But again, what I was saying for commissioners, because at the end, content makers will do whatever commissioners buy and whatever, like, brother, like, it gets funded. Yeah, absolutely. So in the, um, and this is a credit to the Albert editorial workshop, um, which we, it chose to keep in the plan and placement course that we're doing um, is this one side on um, looking at the the two ways to portray this subject is you could either raise the issue or you could show the action. Um, so that's something to um, look at is that it doesn't need to be doomsday, this like glorified version of like what climate crisis is because it is like that, but um, how can we portray it on screen in a way where it's influential? And um, we have such a great opportunity and power to influence the mass um, you know, population because as we all know, media and those that are on screen, people look up to these people, like the, the celebrities, the actors, the performers, um, the filmmakers. And so if we're able to show like, you know, your favorite actor using reusables or choosing not to, like choosing to eat at a vegan restaurant or just simple actions like that. Um, and it doesn't need to be like a whole film or episode about climate change. It's just integrating it into that because that's what we're talking about outside of film. Like we're constantly trying to bring these changes forward. It's the matter of like, can we reflect society into um, onto the screen and so I think there's just such a great opportunity for that change to happen when especially those young people looking at these at this content um, they yeah. want to be like those their favorite their favorite um, performers you know yeah and also actually uh, younger young audiences that's the kind of content that they're looking for that's the kind of content that they're looking for positive you know, like we used to say at Avila, let's join the party. This is a party, let's join it and do it all together. Thanks, Smiley. And finally, JP, that I know obviously you work super directly with all the public broadcasters, with 10 public broadcasters in the Netherlands. How is How are the conversations going there as well in terms of planet placement? 
Yeah, I agree with uh, Gaurav and Babassan that I don't see any cultural hindrances. But what I do see, because we have such a diverse group of broadcasters working together, for, for instance, um, a couple of months ago, um, uh, one of the broadcasters initiated the project to convince the pension fund of all broadcasters to stop working with fossil fuel uh, companies. And I think seven of our 10 broadcasters signed the initiative, but three didn't because they didn't agree on this initiative. And there I see a difference. I don't see, I don't see a cultural hindrance if it comes to planet placement in our programs, because many people, uh, they feel um, um, they, 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 they want to invent uh, um, um, uh, methods to incorporate as a subconscious level, uh, uh, as we say, under your skin in Dutch, and uh, and that's uh, that's that that uh, people like that. Yeah. So do you think so? Basically, in the Netherlands, the public is quite engaged already, right? Because obviously, because in in, in your country as well, because you're below sea level, I. I can see that there's a culture that is really, really engaged with that topic. Definitely. And uh, even more after last year, when the higher parts of our country, well, high, it's only one meter higher, but it's <laughs> higher, <laughs> had these tremendous floods also in Belgium and in Germany. And that was a, 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 yeah, a terrible signal for many people that climate change is here and that it's frightening. Yeah. yeah. And what, so what do you think that the media industry can do even more in terms of planet placement for the Netherlands? Like what, what's, what's the next steps in terms of editorial? Um, well, I, I was inspired by uh, Bassam's slide about this Cli-Fi and Cli-Doc um, uh, uh, lab. We, we had in two, 2013, we had a wonderful series, Cli-Fi, but we didn't know that term at that time. But I think we should do more to develop from that, that per, uh, per, perspective, more drama and documentaries from this Cli-Fi and Cli-Doc lab uh, a point of view. I really loved it. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you, JP. I think we have one minute left and I would like to answer, uh, ask one of the, well, I know there are lots of questions on the chat. I'm sorry we, we run out of time, but um, there is one that is about tax incentives, and I'm not sure like Canada could probably answer that. Is like, have have any of the uh, countries or regions successfully encouraged sustainable production by linking with higher tax incentives? Just like really quick, if you if you could could answer if any of the countries have done. I think Basan as well probably. Um, well, we're working with the Royal Film Commission of Jordan to to do that. They are um, interested in how to link it, but at the same time. They want to make sure that it will not be a burden for the international productions that are coming. So we're working with them on roundtables with the local um, providers, with the international studios, how we can do it in a way that um, it is still appealing for everyone. At the same time, highlights Jordan as the um, green um, um, regulator in the region to bring more uh, international investors, to use it uh, in favor of Jordan. So, so they are interested to link it somehow, but we're still in discussion with them. Thank you. Thanks, Basam. Smiley, do you want to really quick and then I'll just have to wrap up? Yeah, absolutely. So we're also exploring that and researching for our when developing um, our national real green certification um, and we're building it so that one day that um, if there is a tax incentive that is built in Canada um, for for the film industry and sustainability, that this certification can play a role in um, you know, qualifying or meeting those requirements. So we're we're doing a lot of research with what's existing around the world and what um, certifications and tax incentives there are that, um, you know, just so that we could kind of create a framework around that. Um, I'm not uh, sure of many just on top of my head that are out there. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm sorry we've been 81 minutes around the world now, so I think we're going to have to wrap up, but we know that we would be here forever. I just want to thank you so much, our speakers and friends. Actually, I can say friends from my side, definitely. 
Um, and I'm going to, please, last Smiley, I'm going to ask you to go to sleep straight away <laughs> after that. But before I go, uh, I just would like to say that some of you will know already that I'm, I'm, I'll be moving on from Albert uh, in, the, in the next few weeks. Uh, to continue sustainability in another role in the industry. So I just want to use that opportunity that they, uh, Albert has given me to chair to say goodbye and to say, to say thank you to you all uh, because we have a fantastic international community. I'm so grateful for your trust, efforts, and Albert will what like, will carry on growing we what we won't stop growing uh internationally so whatever you are in the world please just contact us on a personal level please implement sustainability and and i'm sure that our cross our paths we will cross again and i'm really nervous you can see i can't even i can't even speak and yeah i just want to say thank you all and i'm i'm sure and hopefully i'm going to see you all again Thank, I just want to say thank you, Rose, for everything that you've done for for Albert and the industry, and and just we 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 see you and we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Rose. So Muchas gracias, Rose. Gracias. Yeah. I'm also going to wrap up then before before uh, Rose starts to cry because I know that that is really And say thank you again to our fantastic speakers, ably chaired by Rose. Uh, thank you to our event partners. On a personal note, we know that um, we are we're, we're gutted uh, that um, that Rose is moving on, but look at what she has helped create, uh, grow, and her legacy will live on in these international collaborations. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your breakfast, your sleep, your dinner, whatever <laughs> is next for you in your day, um, and hope to see you at another event soon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.